In this lesson, I'll show you two examples on how to solve questions involving total pressure and partial pressures. The question reads, a 1.00 liter mixture of helium, neon, and argon has a total pressure of 662 millimeters of mercury at 298 Kelvin. If the partial pressure of helium is 341 millimeters of mercury and the partial pressure of neon is 112 mmHg, what mass of argon is present in the mixture? Let's start by writing out everything we know. We've been told the volume, and I'll represent that as V is equal to one decimal zero zero liters. We've also been told that the total pressure, which I'll say is P sub T, is 662 mmHg. And that's at 298 Kelvin. So our temperature is 298. The partial pressure of helium, which I'll write as PHE is equal to 341 mmHg and the partial pressure of neon is equal to 112. What they're looking for is the mass of argon. So I'll write down mass of AR and I'll put a question mark. So how do we do this? Well I'm going to use Dalton's law which says that the total pressure is equal to the sum of the partial pressures. So let me represent that. I have 662 is equal to PA, in my case will be 341, plus the partial pressure of my next gas, which is 112, and the partial pressure of argon, P sub A. And just to be consistent, I'll write down AR. I need to solve for P sub AR, and I'll take this number over and this number over, where I have 662 minus 341 minus 112 gives us what we're looking for. 662 minus 341 minus 112 gives us 209. 209, and that is the partial pressure of argon. Now I can use the ideal gas law formula, which is shown right here. And I can write down the pressure of argon, which is 209, but instead of writing 209, which is in mmHg, I need to convert it into atmosphere. So I'll take 209 mmHg and multiply it by one atmosphere over 760, because that's the conversion ratio. By multiplying it this way, this unit and this unit go away, and we're left with our atmosphere unit. What I end up with is what I have to place into P. Let's go ahead and calculate that. We have 209 divided by 760 gives us exactly 0 0.275. 0 0.275 atmosphere. So I'll set up my equation where I have PV is equal to nRT. This is my p-value, 0 0.275. My volume is equal to 1 liter, 1 decimal 0, 0. And this is equal to N R T. I know the temperature. I know what R is equal to. That's the gas constant. And we used this in previous videos. It's actually equal to 0 0.082057 liters times atmosphere over moles times Kelvin. So I'll replace that in for R. And what I got for T from the question was 298. If I'm looking for N, and remember, we are looking for the mass. So what I can do is I can find the number of moles, and then using the molar mass of argon, I can find the mass. We'll do that in a moment. So let's go ahead and find out what n is equal to. n is equal to this divided by rt, 0 0.275 times 1 decimal 0, 0, divided by 0 0.08 2057 times 298. Let's go ahead and find out what that is. 0 0.275 times 1 is the same thing divided by the factors at the bottom. 0 0.082057 times 298. This gives us 0 0.0112. Everything after that 2 is insignificant, although I'll keep a few more numbers just to prevent any sort of errors in rounding. 6, 0. And this is in moles. So we found the number of moles. 
and like I mentioned, I need to use the molar mass of argon. Now we can use the periodic table or we can use this for reference where I have 39.98 grams per mole. 39.98 grams per mole. And I'll multiply this by this number. Because by multiplying it the way it is by this number, 0 0.0112460, the mole unit here will cancel out with the mole unit here giving me the mass in grams. Let's go ahead and do that. We have the number that's on the screen times 39.98. This means that the mass of argon here is 0 0.449. Anything after that 9 is insignificant because this number should be three significant figures and this is an exact number so we're going to keep that the way it is. So everything after this 9 is insignificant and because this 6 is greater than 5 this 9 goes up, so we have 0 0.450 grams of argon. And there you have it. That's the answer to question number one. If you'd like to see the answer to question number two, make sure you watch question two of this series. We'll see you soon.